Hey y'all, it's Diane with Shawcraft One in my old barn door, and I am back again with our uh, video number five in our ring binder series. Actually, this is video number six, but video number five got a little whacked out. <laughs> Evidently, the camera recorded at the wrong angle or whatever, so... <laughs> So, I had to delete it. So, I did some, some different things to the journal that you didn't get to see, but it's nothing big. So, I'll kind of go through and show you now. And I know this is a weird angle. My camera setup at my sewing machine is pretty, pretty tough. So, um, I'm going to try and move it a little bit so you can see this ring binder a little better. So, I'm going to pause you for just a second. Okay, maybe that's a little better. It's not going to be great any way I try to go, so just bear with it. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Basically, what I had done was I had gone through and showed you how, uh, before, I didn't have this page behind here, like this recipe page here. What, Gracie? Come here. Come on. Sorry, guys. My puppy's whining at me. Um, so, I didn't have this recipe page behind here. And these pages kind of... Now, Gracie, where are you going? Where are you going? Where do you think you're going? Where do you think you're going? I'm sorry. Hold on. Gotta give her some loving. Okay, sorry. She's pitching a fit. Need my attention. What, Lucy? You need some attention, too? Okay, Mama loves you, too. Alright, so anyway, I'm so sorry about the dogs, but, you know, they're my babies. So, anyways, <clears throat> this page kind of blended in with this page behind here, and it really didn't stand out. So, I thought if I put something white behind there, that it would help it to stand out a little better. So, that's what I did there. And then, I went through... Oops, sorry for shaking the camera. I also have... Uh, the phone plugged in because the battery's dying, so this camera angle is a little bit difficult for me, but that's okay. We'll work with it if you guys be patient with me. So, I got this wallpaper piece <clears throat> in a pack that I got from Selena today. So, um, I wanted to add it in because I thought it went perfect with this journal. Then I went through and I added the um, uh, page tab, not divider divider pages in and I also added in some of the little recipe pages that were in the journal and I added in some wrapping paper into the journal and you'll see everything when we do the final flip through there's another divider and there's another one of the recipe sleeves so I just kind of added those back in that were in, you know, originally in the book. I love you too. Um, I'm talking to the dog, sorry. <laughs> She's in my lap right now. <laughs> and I added this piece of wallpaper. Super pretty. So anyways, um, just added some pieces that were in the original book, like the these and then the recipe cards I added a few pages of the recipe cards back in so that's what I went and did in the last video and it was thankfully it was only about a 15 minute video so I guess the good Lord knew I didn't need to <laughs> record a whole long video because he knew I was messing up even when I didn't so anyways that's what we did so now we are ready to add start adding our fabric embellishments to the edges of the pages and making some fabric pockets and things like that so that's what we'll work on in this video and we'll get as far as we can um, as close to the 30 minute mark as we can and then we'll go forward from there so I've just picked out some fabrics and I didn't finish picking fabrics um, but I started picking fabrics and I have a whole drawer full right up under this table excuse this table this table is in rough shape it is an old church table you know it's been beat up and banged up it's been painted on <laughs> it's it's got a little bit of everything on it so um yeah it's it works though it's functional so I like it I love you too my puppy all right so we're just gonna pick some fabrics to make the little ruffled edges and I know I want to use this one because that screams country to me these are little extra pieces that we're gonna make some pockets with look at the cute little chicken one 
<laughs> Isn't that cute? One of my friends sent me that. Super cute little fabric. Um, I think I want to use some of this, but I'm going to have to see if I can find a page in here that I like it to go with. So anyway, we're just going to start with this. So what I do is I'm going to take, I'm going to find my edge first. Not that edge. I want a good edge. So here's my edge. And basically all I do is I just snip my fabric. I usually get like an inch and a half wide or so. And I'll snip it a little bit. And then I'm going to rip it. All the way down. I like the ripped edge look, and it's a good thing I do because I can't cut for nothing. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put this fabric back up. Gracie, what are you doing, girlfriend? Are you loving old mama? Oh, I love you too. I love you too. That's my puppy. That's mommy's puppy. My big baby. All right. Hi, Lucy. I love you, too. Okay, Gracie, you're bumping the camera. You're bumping the camera. All right, you come down here. And now you've knocked my fabric off. The things we do for our babies. Okay, Ruru. I love you, too. All right, so we're just going to pull our strings. Maybe we're going to pull it. I love you, too. Do you need to go potty? Is that why you're so loving on me right now? You're just trying to get my attention. You need to go potty? Can I see Nico Potty? Can I see Potty? Oh, oh. Can I see Potty? <laughs> okay. Mama will take you, Potty. All right. So, I'm going to pause you for a second and take the dogs out because they're driving me crazy. Hang on. Okay. Sorry about that. It's kind of hard to concentrate when you got a sweet little puppy sitting in your lap giving you kisses. Okay. So, I'm just going to trim off the salvage edge of this or rip it off because I rip everything. And then I am going to pull my strings off. And I see that one's a little that one's a little jagged, but we can work with that. I think we're gonna have enough. I'm just trying to decide which end I want to work with. Okay, so now what I want to do is find a, a page that I want this fabric to be the ruffle on. So we don't want to get, we're pretty much not going to be able to add anything else to our ring binder. Because if you notice how full, <laughs> let me see if you can see. You see how full this is? <laughs> so it's going to, it's going to have alligator mouth. But what I usually do is if it has alligator mouth, I'll leave it like that and send it to the person who's getting the journal. And let them pick and choose what pages they want to leave in, what pages they want to leave out. They can take some of the pages out and cut them up and use them to embellish or whatever their little heart desires. So I don't want to put um, I don't want to put fabric on this page because I just don't want to take away from that page. It's just too pretty. So I'm just going to leave that page like it is. So we're going to go through here and we're going to find a page that's going to be strong enough to hold the stitching for our fabric. And I think we're going to have to go this far. So, I think I might do it on this one. I think it would be cute on this one. So, let's just pull this sheet out. I'm going to leave my journal open so I know where to put my sheet back in. And I'm going to move this journal out of the way so that I have a little bit more room to work here. Okay. Okay. my sewing machine over okay so I'm going to take my strip and I'm going to just kind of line it up with the edge of the page here and I don't want to cover up the chicken or the rooster or whatever that is so I'm just going to go over to I usually go about I don't know a half to three quarter inches in just to make sure I get a good hold on my fabric 
Okay, so I'm going to scoot this over so hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to line this up in my sewing machine like this. Put my foot down and I'm going to do a zigzag stitch, which I already have it set for a zigzag stitch. So bear with me because my sewing machine is loud and it may jiggle the camera because it's jiggly on this table. So... You work with what you got, right? All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna make a ruffle out of this and I'll show you kind of what I mean. But first I'm gonna put a couple stitches in. I'm in a back space to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And then I'm going to put my needle down into the fabric. I'm gonna zoom you in and see if you can see better. Hang on for me. Okay, maybe that's a little better. All right, so then I'm gonna start taking my fabric and I'm just going to crinkle it up right up under the foot of that, um, the foot of my sewing machine. And then once I get that, that ruffle under there, I'm going to go ahead and do another one. All the while trying to keep your stitching straight. And then my fabric's folded right here, so I have to kind of unfold it. Now you can do this really fast, and I usually do, but for the video's sake, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do it slow enough to where you can kind of see what I'm doing, and hopefully you can see it. And I don't do any of it perfectly, because I don't like perfect. I don't like having to be perfect, and I don't like the look of perfect, so... Sometimes it starts going crooked on me, so I have to straighten it back up. And it's hard to do it a little bit. It's hard to see your paper underneath, so you just kind of have to go with the way it feels. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this off right here. I'm going to keep my extra strip of little fabric. And then I fold this under right here and line it up with the edge of the page. I'm going to finish it off and backstitch and come back up and there we have our sweet little ruffle and then I'll go back and I'll pull you know pull loose strings or whatever and you're gonna it's gonna keep raveling I mean you know as you use it just pull the strings and it'll just make it prettier so there is whoops I'm not even in camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, this camera angle. It's horrible. All right, so there is the little ruffle on the chicken paper. I mean, it's really farmhouse paper. I just called it chicken paper because that's the first thing I see <laughs> from the ruffle. All right, so then we're going to pull our book back over. Add it back in. And I'm going to close it so that I can see how far my fabric is poking out. I like for my fabric to poke out the edge of the book. Some people don't like that, but I think it's super adorable like that. So I always do mine that way. If you don't like it like that, I mean, you can trim that off. Or just take the page out, you know. So, but I just like it. And I don't like it perfectly straight. As you can see, you know, it's not straight all the way down. But I like the look of that because I'll have some that are bigger at the end and go, you know, smaller up here. I don't do it on purpose, but it doesn't bother me that it looks like that because I think it's cute. I think it adds to the junk journalness of the of the book and I don't know I just don't worry about it too bad all right so now I'm gonna go find I'm usually probably gonna do like four to six of these little ruffles and I think in this journal I'm probably gonna do four so I'm gonna go a little further and I think this one would be super cute to have a fabric ruffle on so let me find some fabric here um, that I think would be cute on there. 
Now I have this pig fabric that I got from Selena. It's got a staple in it. Let's see if I can get this staple out without ripping my fabric. So I may or may not use this in here. I may use it as a pocket because I don't think that it would look cute as a ruffle. So I'm just going to hold on to that and find something else. And I think I want some kind of blue. I have this real cute blue here that I think would be cute there. I don't know if the blue is going to go well with this green, though. Let me just kind of look again. Let me see if this one would... Ooh, that one would kind of look cute there. What do y'all think? But is it going to be too much to be up against the red? No, I don't think so. I think that'll be cute. Okay, so we'll use this one for the next ruffle. So we're just going to go through this process again. Rip my fabric. Now, if you want to measure your fabric so that you don't have all these strips, which I use these strips, so it doesn't bother me to have the strips, but if you don't want to have so much of the strip, you know, you can measure like two times the size of your sheet and just, just you know, rip that much. So that's completely a preference that's up to you. All right, my fabric does not want to fold. I got strings everywhere. Okay. Hang on, guys. I'm a freak about trying to stay organized, although I'm not the best at it, but I do try. <laughs> so I try to put stuff back as I use it. Okay, so on this one, we're going to pull our strings and ruffle our edges. Not ruffle, but um, fray our edges. That's the word I'm looking for. So we got that side. All right, so it's thinner up on this end, so I think I'm going to sew this end to, to the page. So I'm going to do this one more page with the ruffle, and then I'm going to pause the video because I'm absolutely positive that you guys don't want to see me do every single one of these ruffles. I've shown you how you do it, or how I do it, and um, how you can do it, so I'm sure y'all don't have to watch every every ruffle that I make, so... I'm going to go ahead and move my book and sew this ruffle in, and then I'll come back and we'll work on pockets. Okay, so let me get my sewing machine over here where you can see. So I'm just going to line this up at the top edge, and I'm probably just going to use this as my guide, this whole little line right here. Sometimes using check paper has its advantages. <laughs> Okay, so just backspace and then just start your ruffling. And I don't do perfect ruffles again. I just ruffle it in there. I like the sloppiness of it. This little strip that's extra that we will use somewhere else in the book. And then I'm going to push that up under till it's lined up with the edge of the paper. Don't forget to backstitch. And then go. 
go forward. Okay. And so there you have your ruffle on that page. So we'll go ahead and put it in the book. There's what it looks like in the book, and then I'm going to close it, close the book, and look at it. And then, yeah, that looks super cute. So you have um, your, your two ruffles together. Now you can use lace. Maybe I will put some lace in here. Um, oh, I do have some... Um, some eyelet lace trim that I might use a piece of in here. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and um, leave that for now. I'll finish the ruffles later, but you've kind of seen how I do it. So um, now we'll go ahead and we'll start working on pockets. Let me just check my time. Okay, we're at 21 minutes. So what I usually like to do is I like fabric pockets. But sometimes fabric can be pretty flimsy according to what kind of page you're going to put it on. So, like, if you're going to put, um, let me just find a page to kind of show you an example of. Well... Okay, well, I don't want to put it on that page because she might want to actually use that recipe. All the pages are too pretty to put pockets on. I'm like, wait a minute now. <laughs> I'm having a problem here finding a page to put a pocket. Okay, this one. This one has a white background. So y'all know me and my white backgrounds. Um... I don't mind putting the the pages in here with the white backgrounds, but I usually will try and put something on them just to kind of give it some color or something um, to give your eye a focal point. So um, I'm going to put a fabric pocket on this page. So we're going to pull this page out. If it is a thick, like a thicker design page, like if I wanted to put a fabric pocket on this, I would sew the fabric directly to this. And I may actually put a fabric pocket in here. We'll see. But with this cherry paper, I'm going to move this journal. With this paper with the cherries on it, it's, it's kind of a thin paper. So if I want to put something on a thin paper, I back it to an index card. And I have these blank just plain white index cards. Um, I forget what size these are. Let's see. Okay, these are four by six. So that's kind of the perfect size to fit on my page. I'm sorry, I'm totally out of frame. So that's kind of the perfect size. To fit. I'm sorry about this camera angle, y'all, but there's just nothing I can do about it. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> so sorry. So anyway. So this will just give the fabric a little bit of something sturdy to hold on to so it doesn't put too much um, strain on your actual page. So now that I know that this is a good size for it, if you know if it needed to be trimmed up or whatever, I would. And then I'm going to pick um, my pocket, my fabric, to go on my pocket. Now, this fabric's not wide enough. Let me see if I've got a bigger piece of it because I'd like to put... A piece of this on as a pocket yes I do I do have a bigger size so I'm just going to turn my fabric upside down and kind of measure it and I usually leave a little bit of fabric hanging over the edge of my index card and then I'm just gonna snip right there Snip and rip. Here we go. Okay, and then I'm going to put my index.
index card back. Hope y'all can see what I'm doing. This is crazy trying to do this video this way. <laughs> and then I'm going to measure over here. And I kind of want to look at the front to make sure, you know, I've got some good design on the front of it. And I think I do. So I'm going to turn it back over. Whoops. Make sure I've got it good and flat. So I'll get my measurements right. And then I'm going to snip. Snip and rip. And this piece, I am not throwing away because I will use that for clusters. All right, now I'm going to fray my edges on my fabric. Those I'll probably have to trim. And get all my, and get all my little extra strings. And then these I'm going to have to snip off because this fabric was cut previously um, with pinking shears. So you have that. But I like the little that little design for the top, top of the pocket. So we're going to leave him there. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to change out the color of my thread. Because right now I just have this tan color thread in there for when I was sewing my ruffles on but I want I want red to sew this pocket on so we're gonna switch out the thread real quick it won't take but just a second And we'll scoop this over where you can see. And then I'm going to take a glue stick. Just to hold my fabric into place while I'm trying to sew it so that I don't have slippage. And I'm not going to put a whole lot. I'm just going to put a little bit in the very center um, of that card. And then I'm just going to, I'm actually going to turn. Y'all can't see what I'm doing. This is. Sorry. So I'm going to turn my fabric over. I'm going to turn my card over. And I'm going to lay it down on my fabric. Making sure my edges are where I want them. And I'm just going to rub that down. And it does not need to be perfect because there is no perfect in junk journaling. So I got a little bit crooked. But that's okay. It's not crooked enough for you to be even able to tell that it's crooked. So now we'll bring the sewing machine back over. And I'm just going to stitch all the way around the edges of this card and the fabric. I am going to do a little bit of a back stitch just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm just going to stitch all the way around. And you want to make sure you go in far enough. You know, because your fabric's a little bit bigger than your card, but you can feel your card. You'll be able to feel it underneath there. Now, at this point, you can either leave this open so that you have a double pocket. If you're going to do that, don't put the glue in the middle because then you can't have the double pocket. <laughs> so, but that is an option if you want to do that. All right, so we're going to sew the last edge. Do a little bit of a back stitch. Don't have to do much because it'll hold it. And then pull this out. And there we have a cute little pocket. Now, if you want to sew directly onto the paper, which I do sometimes, you can do that. Just put your paper up in there with um, with it. Well, but the only thing is, if you if you want to sew the top part of it, you won't be able to do that with it directly on the paper. 
So when I, when I don't want to leave a double pocket, I'll just glue this, you know, because it looks like it's sewn. So then you can just glue the edges. Let me grab my glue. And then I'm just going to put it right, right close to the edge of the, um, the hole. And then I'm just going to press it down. Making sure that you get it straight because I got it a little crooked. <laughs> okay. So there is a cute little fabric pocket with chickens on it so we have one pocket um, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here because we're at 30 minutes I'm probably gonna go ahead and make a few pockets if y'all want me to show y'all that on video um, let me know I know the camera angle is a little bit difficult over here but if you're okay with it I don't mind showing you how I make the pockets, but I mean, I'm going to make some different pockets, so I probably will do a video, because I'm going to do a Kristen pocket, I think, so I'll do a video and show you guys that, but anyways, for now, we'll leave it here, um, it just kind of shows you how to sew the ruffles in, sew the pockets in, and the next um, things that we'll do after pockets is we'll do, you know, some fabric strips on the edges, some paper strips on the edges, and um, start doing some embellishing and things like that. So let me know what you want me to do, and I'll be glad to do it. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave any comments or questions you have below. And thanks for watching. Big hugs.